What is up guys and gals? Today I'm going to show you how to balance a set of bike carbs on a car engine. Now I won't be talking to you about how to balance bike carbs in general because there's you know a million videos on YouTube covering that and if you have a set of bike carbs on a motorcycle where they actually belong uh, this video isn't for you so shoot. Now Today we're going to see the easiest and most elegant way of how to balance carbs on a car engine. Now, before I talk about that, just one tiny little, you know, second of your time to tell you something in general about bicarb balancing. And that's that people on the internet and in general seem to overestimate the importance of bicarb balancing. It is important, it will help your engine run better smoother, it will probably improve the gas mileage a bit, but it's not as important as people think. Uh, people seem to think that a horrible engine, I'm not talking about everybody, I'm not generalizing, some people seem to think that, you know, a horrible engine can be made to run great if you simply balance the carbs. That's not true. Balancing by carbs will not solve a rich condition, it will not solve a lean condition, and it will not make, you know, a engine that's sputtering and you know that feels horrible run awesome all of a sudden. The only thing that bike car balancing does is that it adjusts the position of the throttle plates of each individual carb so that they're all in the same you know place and ensures that each individual you know cylinder is pulling in the same amount of air. It's that's all there is to it. So Let's take a little look at my uh, CBR 600 F4 bike carbs. As you can see, they're adjusted with a little screw that sits between each individual carb. When you're adjusting this little, when you're turning this little screw, you're basically moving, you know, the throttle plate. As you can see here, I have adjusted it purposely so that my last carb is, you know, in it's completely off, you know, when compared to the other carbs. And this is the maximum I could adjust it, you know, in the opposite direction of all the other throttle plates. And it's so, it's such a fine adjustment that you might even have trouble seeing it with your naked eye. You can probably see it best in this shot right here. As you can see, the throttle plates aren't in the same position. And I have done this on purpose so that we have something, you know, to actually balance because the carbs were in, you know, pretty much balanced uh, when they came from uh, Dan and SD Engineering when I where I got them from. Now, that's when it comes to balancing bike carbs in general. When it comes to balancing bike carbs on a car engine, you can run into some pretty unique challenges. A unique challenge number one can be access, especially if you have your bike carbs on a car engine on a front wheel drive front engine car. Access can be a nightmare in some cars. In some it's great, in others it's a horrible pain. The method I'm going to show you today, it, you know, it just takes access out of the equation completely. Uh, challenge number two is the particular tool that you're going to use. The most common way to balance bike carbs is to use either a set of vacuum gauges or a special tool uh, made for synchronizing bike carbs. Both of these tools require you to hook up a set of vacuum gauges somewhere on the intake side of the engine before the carbs. Now, that can either work or it, it might be completely, you know, undoable on a car engine. Here's why. Uh, when you're installing a set of bike carbs to a car engine, you are going to need a custom-made intake manifold. So here's mine. And uh, unless you're running a map sensor setup on your engine, your uh, custom intake manifold won't have any sort of outlets on it. Now, in the beginning, I thought about using my stock ECU and a map sensor, so my intake manifold had, as you can see, some outlets. Now, I didn't realize that running a stock ECU is stupid, and I switched to a aftermarket ignition ECU, and then I also realized that it's much better to run a throttle position sensor, for old reference, because it's a much more simple and elegant solution than a bunch of hoses and a map sensor. So, because I was stupid and didn't even think about bicarb synchronization, all I did is I just, you know, plugged up all those outlets and I was left without any location to plug up, you know, the bicarb balancing tool hoses. So I then started looking for an alternative. 
And the alternative is this. It's this little beautiful old school tool that is called a unison. Now the unison is a beautifully simple and ingenious little tool. On the back of it, you have this little sponge and that sponge fits over a wide variety of, you know, trumpets or velocity stacks or whatever else you want to call them. And how you balance the carbs is super, super simple and it takes axis completely out of the equation. You simply place the unison on the trumpet and you watch the little red bobber inside this little column, you know, watch its position and then, and then balance the carb accordingly. So let's see it in action as it balances some bicarbs. Now to balance a set of bicarbs, the first thing you need to do is start the engine of course and then let it warm up to operating temperature. Once it warms up to operating temperature, the first thing you're going to do is to adjust your idle speed. You have to adjust your idle speed uh, to the lowest setting it will run at without the engine, you know, uh, sputtering, you know, or running rough. It has to run smooth, but at the lowest RPM, you know, at which you can get it to run smooth. In my, in my case, that's about 1,300 RPM or so, which is the same number of RPMs that my uh, Honda CBR 600 F4 factory service manual calls for. So once that is set up, I'm actually showing you uh, my RPMs here in my notice easy tune uh, software because I couldn't get my tachometer to work yet. But just a little teaser, I have a really awesome thing planned for a really cool uh, custom tachometer in my MR2. But more about that in some future videos. Now, once the idle speed is set, um, you are going to, uh, you have to know which uh, carburetor is your baseline carburetor. That's the one that you're not going to adjust and that's the one that's the reference for all the other carbs to be adjusting, adjusted according to, you know, that particular carburetor. In my case, that's the number four carburetor and funnily enough, it's hooked up to cylinder number one on my 4AG and that's because the carbs on the CBR600 are counted differently than the cylinders on the 4AG. Just one of the little, you know, quirks of doing a bicarb conversion. Most often the baseline carb is going to be the one uh, to which your, you know, throttle cable is hooked up to and that, you know, and it won't have a screw for adjusting anything on it. So now it's time to grab the unison and put it on your baseline carb and watch where the red bobber is. Inside the unison in the middle, you have this little plate. You can adjust the little plate so you have the bobber sit at a particular position on the column that's very easy to see, you know, and that it can be aligned against one of the lines of the column. Once you have done that, simply place it, you know, on the next carb and watch where it is. If it's in the same position as the baseline carb, don't touch it. Once you find a carburetor, you know, that has it in the wrong spot, that, you know, where the red bobber isn't in the same position as the baseline, adjust the carb very slowly, very finely, until the bobber is in the same position as the baseline carb. Then is you are going to you know uh, flip the blip the throttle a few times and then check all of the cylinders again. If they're all in the exact same position, you are done. The balancing is basically done, and it's simple as that. The unison, I have to say, this is a really nice tool. I got it on eBay. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, it's honestly pretty cheap, and it makes the job a breeze. And there you have it. Probably the single easiest thing I ever did on this car. Uh, the most complicated thing I had to do was to mutilate the screwdriver a bit so it could reach deep enough, you know, between the carbs to turn the little adjusting screws. So that's pretty much it for today. A simple little thing uh, with an elegant solution for it.
as always uh, thanks for watching don't forget to share like comment and subscribe and stay tuned to the d4a channel because i've got some uh, really cool really fun stuff planned for the very near future the car is you know pretty close to being lowered on the ground and driven i'm just waiting for a few more bits and then i'm going to hook up the suspension and we will be driving in no time i know i said this about a hundred times so far and it never really happens it just you know time just keeps slipping through my fingers but it will happen you know we got this far the carbs are now perfectly set up i have to say they run beautifully and there will be a detailed you know carb tuning guide really soon so stay tuned for that as well okay enough talking for today let's let's upload a short video for once so stay tuned and see you soon on the d4a channel